Hi, I'm Frank Roll here in Portland, Oregon today. This is a 32 Roadster we're working on. This is the owner Steve's car. Uh, we work on this when we get a chance to. Not a lot of work happens real fast. This is one of those cars that's got to be absolutely perfect. It's going to be going black. So there's a lot more prep time and a lot more intricate stuff that needs to be perfect on this. This door here is in a tenable primer. You can see we've gone with a really dark color for the primer. This way we can see any imperfections in the door. We also start out, you'll see it's got a light haze on there. That's the guide coat. If we're using a very dark color for a primer, we'll go with a very light color for a guide coat. Most important thing with this is you'll see guide coat on everything. Guide coat you have to live by. It's the only way whether you know your panel is sanded properly or not. Because this car's been sitting around a little while, we work on it when you get the chance in between jobs. Um, sometimes you get stains and things, and this could happen in your garage or in your shop or wherever you're working. Show you what we do and why we want to take that off. It's very important you get that out. You don't want to start mushing that back into the primer. So we'll try to get all that removed now before we can get started sanding on it so I don't bury it back into and don't create a problem in the future. Here's a side panel from this 32 Roadster. It's been sitting for a little while. You can see it's got some oil stains on here. A little bit of rust from hand marks, stuff like that. The most important thing before you start your paint job or any preparation is the metal preparation. We need to get this clean, we need to get this rust gone, we need to get this oil out of here. So I've got a few products here that I can show you that will take care of this. First product I'm going to show you here is the DX330 Acrylic Clean. There's also other brands, Pre-Cleano. This is for removing oil and wax and grease and stuff like that. This will be the first product that I'm using on her. I make sure it get all the oil stains off and any hand prints off of it. Then I'm going to go to this product here. It's a DX579. It's mixed with water. What this does is prepare the panel for primer. It removes all of the rust and any kind of surface imperfections. First thing I'm going to start is with the DX330. I'm going to start with a dry, clean rag. Have a nice rag to dry it. Also have a blower available to blow the area off. We just pour a little on the rag. You can see some of the oil staining in there, just wipes it right off. It's very important to always wear gloves whenever you're working with any kind of chemicals. You can see it's starting to take off some of the rust and some of the oil already. You want to make sure you get down in every little groove, every little nook and cranny. Then we take another clean dry towel, wipe the surface one more time, make sure you get any wet or leftover pre clean on there. Next, you want to dry the panel to make sure it's completely dry of any kind of chemical. Next, I'm going to go to the metal cleaner here. This is for removing any kind of rust. You've seen we've removed any kind of oil and any kind of contaminants. This product's mixed two to one with water. See, I've got a cup with water in here. I'm using a mixing cup so I have an accurate measurement here. I poured three parts there. I'll go to the next three. And that gives me a very accurate measurement of a two to one according to the directions on the label. You want a pretty stiff Scotch-Brite pad, red Scotch-Brite, 3M brand 7447 or 7448's work. Your local paint store will usually sell this stuff. Take a very little bit of product. You don't want to work a very big area at one time. I can't stress enough how important it is to have the panel perfectly clean before you start any priming or any other type of procedure on here. As you can see, the rust is going away pretty easy here. The next step of the process is to take clean, clear water and wipe the panel, wipe all of this off. This is basically an acid. You want to make sure you wear gloves and eye protection when you're doing this. So you can see that rust is pretty much gone. You've got a good, clean surface there. Sometimes it's necessary to take a small wire brush, a little stainless steel brush to get into little areas and stuff. But we don't have a lot of buildup around this latch, so let's work it this way. You don't want to work a very large area. Try to work yourself in a smaller area where it's more controllable. You don't want to leave this set on the panel or dry. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some clean, clear water. Take and wipe as much of this off as you can. You can actually see the oxidation come off the panel. I'm going to take another dry towel, wipe it one more time. You don't want to start the whole process over of allowing this to sit with water on it or you'll start to rust it again. So it's very important you take and you blow it off dry. Now 
And you can see the panel, you can even see the bluing in the panel here. It's a perfectly clean panel there. I can start to sand and start to apply my primer from there. The next step in the process, I like to sand with 120 grit sandpaper. This is a 3M free cut. It's an adhesive back. We use it on one of our Dura blocks here. It's really handy being adhesive back. You just stick a piece on there, get to going. The reason for this is I want to open up this metal. I want to create a good mechanical bond between the primer and the bare metal. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. You can see when you're working with a panel like this, it has louvers on it. Sometimes it's necessary to get up on the edge of the block. This is still part of the process of preparing the panel for primer. This is nothing that you can really skimp on. You have to get this perfectly clean and sanded before you start applying any primer. If you don't have your panel clean and prepped right, you can have a delamination problem with primer down the road and then you've got a paint job that's worthless. So you can see on these louvers, they're pretty flexible, so you really want to be careful with them. That's why I'm coming in kind of sideways on them. Just to make sure I get it. Not a lot of pressure. Really trying to work just to get the metal perfectly clean here so it'll accept primer. You'll be seeing this panel later on. We're going to take it the rest of the way through cleaning and sanding, and then we'll be priming this and then showing you a little bit later on how we go in and sand between louvers and other stuff like that. Here's a common issue. Not all of us can stay steady working on our hot rods all the time. This one's got a couple of oil stains, a couple things in here. We need to make sure we get all that out of the primer before we get started doing any kind of sanding. I don't want to remove this into any other areas, so I'm going to try to remove that. I'm going to come back in with the wax and grease remover. First step is take your pre-cleano and a clean towel. Come in and just start wiping off on that oil stain. And wipe the whole panel. Make sure we're getting everything off. You don't want to leave any kind of traces of oil or anything underneath the paint. If you do that, then you have a problem with delamination down the road again. The primer's not going to stick. Your next paint, whatever you're going to put on over this. So we wipe it off. Use a clean area of your towel. Sometimes you'll have to do this two or three times. Make sure you wash, wipe it real good. Wipe with a dry towel and then blow the panel off to blow the rest of it off. This is a panel that's kind of flexible. I'm going to go ahead and remove this panel to work on it. Part of the reason for that is you can't run a block off the edge just because of the design of the car. We try to take all these things off. Let me get somebody to help me take this off. Dave, could you give me a hand? Thanks, Dave. What I've got here is a table with a little bit of foam padding under here, half inch foam pad, a little bit of paper on there so I don't get a lot of particles in the foam. It's going to give me a pretty stable surface to work this on. And I'll show you while I'm blocking this, I'm really not going to be pushing a lot on the panel. I'm really going to let the block do the work, let the panel stay as firm as it can without flexing it because then I'll never get a straight panel out of that. First thing I want to do again is start out acrylic clean the panel. Don't know how long it's been sitting, so I want to make sure I don't work any oil down into the surface. Just a little bit of insurance. Now you can see the, what's come off of it. Blow it dry. What I'm sanding with here is 120 grit sandpaper again. This, this panel's been through one blocking cycle already. We're going to use this primer to try to make this panel as flat as we can. There's a couple of different blocks. We have a Dura block, it's a little bit flexible. We've got a standard long block and a hard block. On a panel like this, it's important to use the largest block you possibly can. The bigger the block, the flatter the surface will be. I've got this marine hook it block, 150 grit sandpaper. You notice it spans almost the whole panel. It's important to work off the panel. This is the reason why I take it off the car is I can't work the block off the side of the panel. So what I'm going to do is use this large block. You can see the guide coat starting to come off. You can see old sand scratches in here. The larger the block, the flatter the surface will become. And it's most important thing is the, the harder the block, the flatter the surface will become.
You can see a slight low area here where the guide coat stayed in and where it's starting to come out here. Let me show you a little bit about guide coat here. It's a light or dark depending on the color of primer you use. You spray it on after your primer is applied and what it does is it stands on the top of the primer. So as you start to sand off, once you get down through that guide coat, you know that that surface is perfectly flat. If it leaves a dark spot in there, you know you've got a low spot and you might have to reprime and start the process over. So I'll continue to block this. So you can see using a large block like this, I'm showing you a little low spot here. You can see where it's sanded through the guide coat here. If I was using a smaller block here, I would have never found that low spot here. And being as it's gonna be a black car, something like that would really show up. So I need to sand down and keep going in this area all the way across this panel with a larger block in order to get this perfectly flat. You can see I'm cross-hatching with this, going in one direction across the panel, and sometimes I'll even switch hands and cross-hatch in the opposite direction. Always making sure you keep your block flat on the panel. I'm not applying a lot of pressure with it. I'm really just letting the block do the work. I'm sliding the block on the work. Gonna check your work, look at it. You can still see a little bit of a low spot here. This is all coming out pretty nice right in here. A little low right here. Like I said, the larger the block, the flatter it's gonna be. You can see you work this block right over the edge. In here, we can get pretty close to the whole panel just with this one block. There's other ways. You have sandpaper like this. It's a stick it long paper. If you can't find one of these blocks, this is a marine hook it board for marine use. I found it to be one of the best blocks I've ever had. You can take this stick of paper, stick it on a long flat board or something else, that, you know, something that's perfectly flat. It's a little bit narrower, but it'll pretty much do the same job. One thing you don't want to do is keep a straight pattern with a block. All that's going to do is create two big track marks in the panel. So you see me always cross-hatching across the panel. Very important. Want to keep checking your work to see where you're at, see if your guide coat's gone. It's important to change your paper periodically. Paper will load up with primer and it just stops cutting the way I want it to cut. It's more important to have fresh, clean paper on there so you're actually cutting the surface rather than just smearing it around. This is real simple. Simple Velcro back on this one. I showed you earlier there's other ways is simple stick it. And get back to blocking.
If you want to keep checking your work, see if you have any low spots. Still got a low spot here, but you can see the rest of the panel's coming out pretty nice. You can tell when you're about done here. You can see I'll keep going a little further on here. A little bit of a low spot still, a little bit of a low spot on this edge here, but I can work that block in. What you don't want to do, you can stress this enough, is working off the edge of a panel and working down to create like a pillow contour to the panel. So if I'm trying to get this area down in here, you want to block this whole area out here so you come down until you finally meet this area here. So I'm still gonna have to do a lot of blocking up in here and the rest of it looks pretty good. If you do break through and you start seeing metal on it, basically it's time to stop, reprime, and start the process over again. Panels like this will sometimes go to two or three different primings. You can see that I'm not putting a lot of pressure into the panel. I'm really gliding the block, allowing the block to do the work. The flexibility of this panel would be similar to working on probably one of the newer import cars. You get a little more flex in the panel, even on the quarter panels and fenders and stuff. Allow the block just to slide on it rather than pushing it down. Even if this flexes a little bit, I still know I'm gonna get perfectly flat primer out here. It's getting apparent here that I'm starting to break through a little bit of bare metal here, breaking through a little bit of filler here, so I can see that I'm gonna to need to put a, another application of primer on here. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you over here on a curved side. This is why it's so important to use guide coat. You can see I'm starting to hit bare metal up here. I've still got a low spot here, and I'm starting to kick up. So the panel's kicking up, so I can see I'm gonna to have to reprime here. And in this area here, you see the guide coat. What I've got is a low spot here and a nice, even, straight crown right there. So I'm going to block in here to see if I can't even this crown out on the side. Check your progress, see where you're at. Still see a little bit of low spot there. And we'll be needing to prime it again. Let's see if we can get more of this out here. Before we go any further here, what I want to do is I have a nice reveal right here. You can see where this little bead pops up right there. I want to tape off this edge so that I don't do an undercut or I don't create an undercut in the primer right here. So what I'll do is tape off this edge and continue to work the primer down there. Then when I'm ready to sand this area, I'll reverse the tape, put it here, and work that area with the sandpaper. What I'm doing is putting the edge of the tape down in the corner. A nice straight edge. That just gives me a little bit of protection on this surface when I come down and sand over there. I'm just going to continue to block into this area. We'll block down a little bit longer with a big block here. You notice I'm not going lengthwise on it. I don't want to 
create a big dig on here. You still want to cross hatch into the area. A little bit that direction. A little bit that direction. It's very important to keep the block at the same angle. If you tip the block a little bit, you'll be just cutting out a big hole right in here and creating something like this again. So as you can see, I'm trying to keep the block over the radius as straight as possible. You can see on this edge, I'm still continuing with that same problem, so I'm going to have to add some filler here, or I'm going to have to reprime and reblock this panel. It's a little low in this area here still, but I don't want to keep chasing it because I'm starting to hit filler here, I'm starting to hit bare metal here, and that's telling me that I'm going to just create a low and I'll have a dip in that panel right there if I chase that. So what I'm going to do now is stop sanding on this panel and I'm going to go ahead and run it through another prime. Another use for using pre clean or prep saw or acrylic clean is you can check your progress on your panel. What I'll do now is put a fair amount of pre clean on there. Just wipe the panel and get it wet. It kind of acts like a clear coat on there. It gives me a chance to look down that panel and see how straight it is. Kind of neat when you're doing a whole car, you can wipe it down. It's just like putting clear on the car. You can see where you have any imperfections and any place you need a little more attention. What I'm going to do now is tape up the other side of the reveal. That way I won't destroy what I've sanded there while I'm sanding this reveal. What you want to do is get this whole piece sanded as straight as you can, or as straight as it's going to be in this priming, before I send it through to the next prime. I'm going to change to a different block. This is a DuraBlock product. It's using 120 grit sandpaper. So just a little bit more maneuverable. Get your panel where you can get to it. I'm going to very carefully cross hatch across that primer. Okay, very little pressure on the block. Letting the sandpaper do the work. You can see the highs and lows. You've got a low part, a little bit low there, a little low there. So just keep working. You just want to work that until you start to see bare metal or body filler. I'm going to block up into this reveal here. And you don't want to go straight across because you'll do an undercut in there. So what I'm going to do is, even in this area here, Slowly cross hatch that in one direction and then the other. What I'm doing is I'm drawing the block out away from the reveal this time so that I'm not undercutting underneath the tape. A little nasty mark that'll show up. It doesn't take a lot of time to get it down there. But you can see that reveal is coming out real nice right there.
So you can see why it's so important to put guide coat on there. If I didn't have guide coat on this piece, I'd never know where I was at. I wouldn't know what I'd sanded, what I hadn't sanded. I wouldn't be able to find my highs or my lows. You probably noticed the tape on the panel, kind of a lime green tape. It's an automotive grade tape from 3M. It'll take a lot of abuse, a lot more than your average blue painter's tape or anything like that will. It's really important to have good tape whenever you're doing a good high quality tape. You don't want it peeling up when you're priming. You don't want to have it peel up when you're painting something. So try to stick with a good high quality brand tape. The automotive grade is probably some of the best for this application. You can see the low spots in there still where my guide coat is, so I know where I'm going. I'm taking long sweeping strokes on it and just use the largest block and the flattest areas you can. I've got a little bit of guide coat here, so I was talking about an undercut earlier. I've just started to poke through a little bit of body filler right there, very thin amount of it, but now that I've seen body filler here and I've got a low spot there, there's no sense in me sanding any further. All I'm gonna do is remove my body filler and then the panel won't be straight anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scuff this guide coat out of here and go ahead and reprime this panel. Here I've placed the hood back on the car so I can show you why it would have been possible to block it or get it flat to this level. As you can see the block, it was so important when I blocked it to run the block off the edge. You can see by hitting this lip here, I've never blocked it this flat or this straight. It's real important to, when you can to fixture the pieces and get them out where you can work on them. We also use other fixtures. I can show you that too. Here's one of the fixtures I was telling you about. Really it'll hold the fender nice and sturdy and firm so we can work on it. Here at Steve's we try to do the best quality work we can. This allows us to work this panel all the way through. Holds it nice and rigid. You can see this is all the way through color sand and buff, ready to assemble onto the car. This fixture Steve designed built with round tubes so it can swings, adjust, adjust in and out. You can pretty much hold anything on it. Bolt onto all your stock mounting points, wherever you need to. You can pretty much hold anything you want with this. You might notice I've got this fixture taped up. If I'd continue to paint on here, I wouldn't be able to slide these tubes in and out. So if you are gonna build one, you wanna protect it. Also, it keeps any debris coming up into your paint job when you're painting the part. Before we go to prime with this panel here, I wanna be able to block across this panel. This is really an obstruction, so what I'm going to do is remove these rivets here and pull these latches off. It'll give me a much better finish on this piece. I'll be able to block it and make it really nice. What I'm going to do to remove these, as you can see, I've started here on one. I'm just going to drill out the back of the rivet till I hit the old metal, where the rivet will just drop out. You want to make sure you don't drill too far so you'll be drilling through the other panel. You just want to drill the top of the rivet off so you can just give a little grind and then tap the rivet through. Put a little pre-cleaner on the rag. As usual, I'm going to get started by cleaning the panel before I do any sanding. Next step is I need to blow all that off. Make sure it's perfectly dry. What I'm going to do is sand this area here. There's a couple complex curves in here, and I've got a reveal in here I need to save. So in order to do that, I'm going to start out with a piece of tape. Tape the reveal right in the crack. 
This is a green automotive tape. It's a little bit heavier duty than your regular painter's tape. This is found in your normal body shop supply store. Now that I've got it taped off, I can start sanding against this reveal without taking any of the material off over here. Starting off with a small dirt block. It's a little bit flexible. I can move this block up into this corner up in here or into, up into this dish here. It's important to cross hatch the block still. You can see the guide coat starting to come off there. You see where it's got a little bit of a dark shadow there where it's a little bit lower. I'm going to continue cross hatching again in the opposite direction. You don't want to start going over the corner like this because it's just going to create a big ridge in there. So what I'm going to do is work that out from that edge. Always cross hatching one way and then the other. You can see where that's starting to come out pretty flat right there. You can still see a little bit of a low right there in the primer. This little block here works real good for a little area here. When I get up into this flat, I'll take a little bit larger and flatter block so I can work up the flat area. I'm switching to one of my old favorite blocks here. Nice hard flat surface. I put this on the belt sander many a times, getting a little thin, but it's a nice hard flat surface right there for blocking these big flats. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper now. You can see as I'm blocking that out, the dark spots in the guide coat are the low spots. The sanded parts are the highs. Still staying out of this complex curve in here. It actually curves out, curves over. So you gotta be real careful you don't start digging in down there. So I'm gonna keep this block up high and still cross hatching. You can see as I'm working into this reveal here, it's a little dark up in there still. That's telling me that this panel is tipping in a little bit. So I've got to work more of this area here, actually all of this area here, to get down to where this panel is flat to the bottom of that reveal. You always want to keep cross hatching on the panel, one direction and the other. Just keep checking your work. You can see it's getting pretty straight and pretty flat right there, but I still have that to contend with. Sometimes your paper will get loaded up on your block. You just need to slap it a little bit, get some of that sanding dust off of there. A lot of times you can't get the block sand in your car and get to this point with it. It just sits in primer for a while. There's really no window as to when you can sand your primer. As long as you're going to be repriming it and you want to block it flat, you've learned a few new techniques. You can get in there and block it one more nice time and then reprime it and make it perfect the way you always wanted it. Primer is still a porous surface. So you don't want to keep it moist and covered up to where it can start rusting through the panel. So you still want to try to keep it in a dry, clean area if you're going to be storing it for any time or any length of time between priming. It's not like a paint where it's going to seal in the surface. This is still kind of open to where it will allow moisture to get through to it or into it. You can see I'm sanding. You can see on this panel here that I'm right up to the reveal there and it fades out. I'm getting this panel pretty flat right up to that reveal. So I'm going to still continue to work that area. I always want to keep feeling and keep checking your work. You can tell when your paper gets loaded up, it's just time for a new piece of paper. You'll be spinning your wheels trying to cut this down. You can see I'm working the area down here. 
I'm seeing, starting to see a little trace of maybe filler right there. I don't know if you can catch that or not, but if I start to see filler right there, and I've still got guide coat here, then it's going to be time to reprime this panel. So we'll keep sanding and see what we get there. I'm going to switch to a little bit larger block now. One thing that's nice about this, it's a much firmer, much stiffer panel. It's a lot easier to block and a lot easier to get it flat. I'm still using the same technique. Coming out, just switching to a larger block, getting into a larger area. The bigger the block, the straighter the panel's gonna be. So I'm gonna keep blocking here. I mean, when you're working on a softer surface, you really gotta be real careful on how you do it. You notice I'm keeping the block parallel with the car. It's important, because if I start to turn it, there's a bit of a crown in this panel coming out this way. So if I start to turn the block, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna flatten that crown out of that panel. So by keeping this block this way and cross hatching across that panel, I'll be able to keep the crown in the panel. Well, you can see the importance of guide coat. You can see a little ding right here. You can obviously see that that's not going to block out. This panel is going to have to be primed and re-blocked. I'm finishing up this end of the quarter panel here. You notice I'm keeping my block nice and flat, making sure not to tip into the edge. You don't want this panel to look like a pillow. I'll show you in a minute here when I close the door how important it is to block across both panels so you have a seamless fit. We're in our final blockings here. You notice I'm not running over the edge, I'm not running down, I'm keeping the block flat. You can see we blocked this panel out really nice. A few things to fix here. We'll take care of these with a catalyzed glazing putty and those will be gone in the next priming. To get the ultimate fit, you want to block across both panels as you're going. We've done this in earlier blocking and now we're about ready to prime this panel for a final prime and this panel is about ready to start for the final sanding for a refinishing now. You can see that I've taped this area up in here. It's kind of a complex area. We've got a Radius this way, got a radius down, got a real tight little corner in here. I've got a little brass block here, kind of handy for me. You can use whatever you want for your sanding blocks. This just allows me to get a good handle on it, and work the area up in like that. It's important where you put your tape also, need to mention that. This tape is going to dictate the shape and the size of this radius right here, exactly what that looks like, because you're only going to cut down to the tape. So this is really going to dictate the shape of the car right here. You can use a small piece of wood or something else for a little area like that. Once I got the corner knocked out there, I can come back into a dura block. Got a little bit of flex to it so I can hold it here and I'll cross hatch into that area again. When I'm coming up over a radius like this, the real handy block kind of flexes around a little bit. I can flex it right over the corner of the car here. I'm going to take big long sweeps with it. Make sure you're not leaving any high and low spots in there. 
you can see it really makes short work of the whole process here. Just having the right blocks and the right tools to do it with. I'm still using 120 grit sandpaper because I know I'm going to be repriming this. You can go down to 150 if that's what you got. Usually on your final priming, you don't want to go anything coarser than 120 or 150. You can see how you can roll that right over that radius. First thing I'm going to do is start coming in this area here. It's a little bit flatter here, but it's got a nice round to it here. Got a little bit of open area here, so I'm going to get into this flat area here before I start my radiuses here. See, I'll grab a little bit smaller dural block here and work up in this area. Always remember cross hatch into that tape. Don't try to follow the edge or you'll be having a big undercut right up against the edge of the tape. When you're sanding, you want to be real careful. You only have a certain amount of primer on there. So you want to be real careful when you're going over your radiuses. See, that's why I always do the flats first, do the edges, and then roll into the radiuses. It's very easy just to take all the primer off, and then you got to start over from square one. You can see I'm cross hatching, still cross hatching into there. I'm going to work this little corner here. I've got the top of the radius cut. Let's cut the bottom side now. These are some of the most difficult areas to work on the car. It really takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. So when you really want to slow down and really take your time and make it look nice. So all this attention to detail is really going to pay off when you finally go to put the paint on the vehicle.
There you go. The last part of finishing this panel is filling these little dings here. You want to make sure you get the guide coat out of them. This is a two-part finishing putty. The red stuff is the catalyst to make it harden. Now I'll mix up a little bit of finishing putty. This is just for real fine, small little spots like this. You don't want to use this for trying to straighten the vehicle. You really use this sparingly. Very thin applications, very small dents and dings. I'm mixing on an old window here. Just seems to be real easy for me to use. You can use a piece of board or a piece of cardboard if you don't have a piece of glass to work on. This is a regular standard putty knife. Using a metal knife, it just leaves a nice clean edge when you're trying to push this down. This is for only very small and thin repairs. You don't want to try to straighten a panel with this. I waited a few minutes for the filler to set here and check a little bit. If it loads up on your paper, it means it's not ready to sand. This looks like it's ready to go. It's looking pretty good. Putty did a real nice job of filling those dings. Now this panel is ready for tenable primer and final sanding. Go through this whole blocking one more time. This is a wet spray on guide coat by Sim. It's a good product when you can spray it on. I'll be showing you how to use a wipe on type of guide coat. It's important to get the whole surface of the panel before you do any sanding. This allows you to see where you've sanded and where you haven't to make sure you're getting the best results you possibly can. This is a standard long block. I'm going to be using 120 grit sandpaper for this. You want to take long sweeping strokes with a block like this. to get the panel as straight as you can. This is the same panel we worked on earlier. I went ahead and put another coat of primer on this. This should be the last time we have to prime it. Whenever possible, use the biggest block as you possibly can. This should be the last coat of high build primer. We'll be able to go to our tenable primer for our final sanding for paint. You notice I don't work one area at a time. I'm working the whole panel at one time and continually wiping it off, looking at it. If you work one area at a time, the chances are I can make this area a little bit lower than this one, then I'll have a wave in the center of the panel. So I'll work a little bit of one area, move to another, before I finally do a final block over the whole panel. Remember to keep your block flat on the work. You might have noticed I've taped the panel to the paper here, just so it won't jump around on me. I'm using real light pressure when I'm pushing across the panel. Pushing the block, but I'm not trying not to push down too hard on the panel. That way the block is straightening the primer without distorting the metal too much.
You can see it's starting to look pretty good. You can say the trick here is very light pressure. Let the block do the work. And always cross hatch. Most important thing. One direction and then the other. One thing you want to make sure you're doing when you're applying so many coats of primer and blocking these out to make them so perfect is you don't want to keep layering, layering, layering primer on. You still want to look for bare metal when you're blocking the panel. You still want to try to take as much of it off. Get the panel as straight as you can with the least amount of material on it. It's looking pretty good. Just got a little bit more to go here. Looking pretty good up there. Now I'm going to untape it and flip it up here a little bit higher so I can get the edge of this. I'm going to tape right down on the reveal here so I can get a nice clean edge down in here for our final coat of primer. Well, I got that there. I might, well, I might as well use it to hold it on the table. See, I'm cross hatching or sanding into an angle into that reveal. You don't want to sand with the reveal because you just better have a big undercut right there. So I'm going to cross hatch in one direction and then the other. Now I can unmask this reveal, put the tape on the other side, and sand here. I got a little sanding here. You see it gives you a nice clean reveal right there. I got a little bit more to go right here. Now I'm just going to wipe it off and I'll put a thin layer of pre-cleano on there and we can see how straight this panel really is. 
You can see all the problem areas with the panel are gone. This panel is ready for tinnable primer and final sanding. I've taped the reveal off. See how easy it is to sand in this area without the latches and handle in the way. This is the first time we've primed this panel. The first time it's been blocked. You can see the way it's coming out right now. This panel is probably going to go through a couple more sessions of priming and blocking. You can see lows, little high spots in here. I'll probably have to prime and block this panel a few times so I can get this one perfectly straight. Every time you prime it, you want to try to block it and get it as close as you can. One of the hardest things you'll ever come into sanding is louvers. Sometimes it's good just to take the side of a block and work the louver over. This is probably one of the most difficult challenges to blocking is louvers. And it's real easy to slice your fingers open on these edges, so you got to be real careful when you're doing these. You can see I'm starting to hear bare metal here. It's still a little bit low right here, so this is definitely going to take another application of primer. I switched to a little bit smaller block. One of the things about louvers is they're really soft to work on and you've only got one layer of sheet metal here. So you really got to be careful with them. You got to make sure they're perfectly straight and flat before you even start. If you get a louver that's bent, you're not going to be able to block that out. Okay, use really light pressure. And try not to bend that louver. As you can see, this takes quite a bit of time to do a louvered panel like this. Sometimes I'll work the flats out here and then come back into the corners at the end. If you notice when I'm sanding these, still not just running up and down the louvers. I'm still cross hatching my pattern. When I get to the ends of the louvers here, I have this little brass block. I use it in little, other little areas too. You just use this to work the points in. Then you get it down on the flat and just slowly work it in. As you can see, louvers take a lot of time. What I like to do is come in with this little brass block. It's a little time consuming, but you gotta come in here. You gotta make sure that this flat comes nicely into here. Once I get this flattened out, then you can work the point of the louver in a little bit. Sometimes you got to come in with a little bit of paper just to get the corner in there. It's not necessary for me to complete this whole panel on camera. But you get the idea. Yeah, once you've sanded one louver, you know how to sand the rest. Just avoid sanding the whole thing with your fingers. It's really going to look like a mess. To tint this primer, we're going to be using one of my urethane base toners. I'm tinting the primer black on this, so I've got a good black underbase. Also, black is one of the hardest colors to do, and you can see any kind of imperfection in it. So it makes it a lot easier to tell when this panel is perfectly straight for a black top coat. I've applied two extra coats of primer on this panel for a total of three. But if you've got an oven in your booth, you can cook this and be sanding within about two hours. If I let it dry without the heater, you want to let it set overnight. Now that I've let it dry overnight, I can wipe it down and put some guide coat on it. The guide coat I'm spraying is just a lighter primer, but I've reduced it a whole lot so it'll just lay on top of the primer I've sprayed on the panel. When you apply your guide coat, you want to make sure that the panel is nice and dry. You want to apply a light, thin coat over the whole panel. That way you get a consistent pattern to sand through. You can see I have a lot enough time for this guide coat to dry. It takes a little bit longer because it's a normal primer. You really want to let it dry or if it just gums up your paper. It's good to know how to use different kind of guide coats 
for different stages, like this is a light guide coat over a dark primer, or you want to do a dark guide coat over a light primer. You also see the block I'm using. It's a good hard aluminum block. Gives me an ultimately flat panel when I'm done. Just strip your paper long ways, and it folds over and locks into the block. I'm using 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper for my final sanding. As I was sanding, it felt kind of sticky. You can see the guide coat's kind of sticking to the sandpaper. It's time to change this paper. I think I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer for this guide coat to set up. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this paper. Real simple. Notice I'm still continuing to cross hatch. You want to use that process all the way through the panel from start to finish. It'll give you the straightest panel possible. You can see how that guide coat really allows you to read the panel and see where highs and lows are and just the slightest imperfection in there. But all this will block out just fine. You want to do your final sanding wet. It keeps the paper clean, lets it slide, pretty much makes it effortless for your block. You notice I'm just barely holding the block. I'm allowing the block to do the straightening rather than pushing it and warping the panel as I'm doing it. So really let the block do the work. You want to make sure you keep it clean. Don't lay your block down on any dirt. Big scratches through the panel. You can see my paper's staying pretty clean now. Shows me my guide coat's pretty well dried too. See how useful that guide coat is on this. If I hadn't guide coated that, I would have never known where I'd sand and where I didn't. You can see I'm still cross-hatching over this radius, but I've also taped up the reveal. I don't want to be hitting the reveal until I'm ready to sand down there. You can see how it's coming out. I'm going to need to move this up on the table so I can get this side right here in the reveal. 
I've gone ahead and changed the paper and taped the panel back on here to hold it still while I'm sanding it. Went ahead and changed my paper too. I'm just going to finish up this radius here before I start to sand the reveal. You can see I'm using two hands in this area, getting it real wet. You really need a lot of control when you're sanding around the reveal here. looking pretty good. A little bit more in the corner here. I'm going to have to dry it off and tape up on the opposite side now and I can sand the reveal. You can see I flipped the tape around to protect where I just sanded. I'm going to cross hatch down this reveal here. I'm going to work up the radius. You can see why it's important to tape off between places. So you see I'll actually start with the block up here and then work it into the groove as I'm working across the panel. This way I don't cause an undercut under here, but I get a nice sharp corner. A little bit of 600 by hand, just to soften that out just a little bit. I can untape it and we'll wipe it down with some pre cleaner and see how straight it looks. You can see I've wiped the panel off and we just kind of wash it down with some clear water. A nice trick, you really want to see how it looks before it's painted. I put a little pre-cleaner on a gun with a fine tip on it. If you wipe pre-cleaner on a 
panel like this, you'll see streaks from the rags and highs and low from the rags. If you spray it on, you can do this on the side of the car also. If you spray it on on a dry panel, it'll really show you what the clear coat's going to look like when this panel's done. You just let that set for a second. You can see how nice that looks, even on a flexible panel like this. This one's ready for paint. I sure hope you enjoyed all this. I'm Frank Roll. Hope to see you in another video.